Uh, thank you. Okay. Um, first item on the agenda is approval of minutes from June 14th meeting. Recommend approval of minutes. Second. Motion by Ms. Peters, second by Mr. Polar. All those in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5 0. Any special requests or continuances? No. Seeing none, we'll move on to the findings of fact. Uh, first one on the agenda is BZA 2021 008. Sign Solutions, 173 East Broadway. Chairman, in consideration of the statutory criteria, I move that we adopt the written findings of fact as presented, incorporating the evidence submitted into the record as our final decision. The final action, the variance petition BZA 2021-008. Second. Motion by Mrs. Peters, second by Mr. Smith. All those in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5-0. Uh, next up, BZA 2021-012 for uh, K Wash Real Estate at 49 Mercantile Drive. Um, in consideration of the statutory criteria, move that we adopt the written findings of fact as presented, incorporating the evidence submitted into the record as our final decision. Final action for the variance petition number BZA-2021-012. Yes. Second. Motion by Mr. Polish, second by Mr. Foster. All those in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5 0. And next is BCA 2021 013, also for K Walsh Real Estate at 49 Mercature Drive, dimensional area. Mr. Chairman, in consideration of the statutory criteria, I move we adopt the written findings of fact as presented, incorporating the evidence submitted in the record as a final decision and final action for variance petition number BCA 2021 013. Second. Motion by Mr. Foster, second by Mr. Smith. All those in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5 0. Uh, no old business. Any old business from the floor? Seeing none, we'll move on to new business, which is docket BZA 2021 011, dimensional variance request for Cindy Thrasher, 236 Woodland Drive. Um, all those wishing to speak to this petition, please stand and be sworn in by our secretary. You're speaking for or against either way. No, okay. Please learn the penalty to refer to it as funny about it is true to the best your knowledge. Yes. All right. Ms. Ms. Thrasher, if you would go to the mic. Oh, the microphone's on also. Yeah. One item of business first, Mr. Chairman. The notices as far as newspaper and letters to Jason are all in order. We have the receipts in the file. The on-premise sign being visible for 15 days did not happen. There's some miscommunication with doing the meetings virtually. We've been putting the signs out ourselves instead of having somebody come in at all. So this, we didn't realize that sign didn't get put out till a week ago. So they did not meet the 15 day requirement that's in our rules. Uh, it's only been up seven days. So we need to consider uh, a waiver of the BZA rules of procedure to Accept the notices that were done. So our rules are 15 days, and what's the? Um, the statute is minimally 10 days of publication. Our yeah. rule requires publication and posting of the sign on the property. Uh, the publication was made. Yeah, the publication yes. and the uh, letters to owners all went out 15 oh, or 16 okay. days ahead of time. So we would, uh, I guess, so. the motion is to waive the BCA rule of procedure requiring on site sign posting of the variance for a period of seven days as opposed to 15. Mr. Chairman, I would we uh, waive the rule for posting a physical sign from 14, 15 days to seven days. Sorry. Motion by Mr. Foster, second by Mr. Polar. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Both all opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5-0. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, Mrs. Thrasher? Yes. Okay. Um, Tell us, what, uh, first of all, name and address for the record, and then tell us why you're here. Cindy Thrasher, 1368 Echo Bend, Raywood, 46142. Um, I'm here to represent the Kennedys. Um, they're wanting to construct an attached garage to their residence. Currently, they have a small one-car garage that's detached. Um, due to the size of the increase, they're required to go back and put masonry on their entire house which they are unable to do. So we are requesting um, relief from the uh, exterior uh, requirement. Okay. 
And are you familiar with the statutory criteria answers that you uh, yeah. you or the client submitted? Yeah. And we'll need to go through those to get them on the record. So I'll get you started if you would just provide your answer. Uh, number one, the approval will not be injurious to the public health, safety, morals, and general welfare of the community because? Um, yes, the residence was built uh, many years ago and has no exterior history um, currently. So nothing as far as um, aesthetics or um, safety or anything like that will be changing. Okay. Number two, the use and value of the area adjacent to the property, including the variance, will not be affected in a substantially adverse manner because? Um, the property has been improved. The existing detached garage um, is going to be removed, um, adding a new one, which will help um, increase the property value, so that should also help increase the value of the adjacent properties. Number three, the strict application of the terms of the zoning ordinance will result in practical difficulties in the use of the property because? Um, the old residence, or the residence was uh, probably one of the original ones. It was all done in siding, so there's no brick ledge or anything that's in place, so it would be um, impossible to go back and put actual masonry, um, so that's why we're requesting. Okay. And number four, the structure is not regulated under Indiana Code 821-10-3. Um, so that is not applicable, so I'll take that. Um, are you familiar with the two uh, recommendations by the staff in the staff report? No, I'm not. Okay, so number one, um, prior to issuance of a building permit, the property owner shall have the subdivision plat amended to merge the two lots, lot 31 and 30 and 31 in Woodland Addition, uh, into one large lot by deleting the common lot line in the middle. And number two, the property owner shall either remove the stone portion of the existing driveway or cover it with soil and grass, and all new driveway areas shall be paved with hard surface materials such as concrete, asphalt, or paving bricks. Yes. Okay. Um, anything else? Um, no. All right. Okay. Anyone else wishing to speak? If not, I'll close the public. No. Yeah. Oh. All right, sir, you'll have to stand and be sworn in by our secretary. Go ahead and step up to microphone and then your name and address for the record. My name is Charles Alley. I live at 480 Woodland Place. I live right across the street from this house. And uh, actually, their garage is from my house. Uh, and she's right. The, uh, the way this house was built, there is no bridge that is built into the foundation. It's making it impossible for this house to ever have brick marks. There's no way. You have to dig a complete new footer alongside the existing one. There's no way. Right. But the house is built wood siding. Another house, two or down, uh, also has wood siding. Okay, so it's built like that. So there's no way I could ever have brick put on it. Uh, and this is a really nice uh, house. They've taken good care of it, improved it, and so forth. Good family. Love. Then there's neighbors, right? So this isn't a case where anyone's trying to uh, I'll take the easy way out, you know, or build something that's going to, uh, in the end, you know, bring down the value of anyone else's property. It's probably nothing but improving everyone else's Excellent. You know, value. So, yeah, it, it's, it's actually, it's, I think their house is part of Woodland Edition originally, and there's no, that's the older part of, of, the, of the neighborhood than what the Richardson addition is, which is where we live. Spring, or the valley there is, as they used to call it, uh, started being built around the state, you know. And it's, it was called, I believe, called the Richardson addition. Okay. So if, if there's something on the books about those houses have to have uh, some sort of veneer, masonry veneer on them, I'm sure that pertains to the Richardson addition in the valley that was started in the 50s. This house was built before that. It's really part of this neighborhood over here toward Euclid Avenue. That. Versus the houses over here, which were built later. And most of them are, uh, not all of them in the, in, the, in the valley. Most of them are, not all of them. There's a house two doors down. That's been the 60s. It's got this site to this day. Too. So as far as that, asking them to do that, it's impossible, and also it doesn't fit with the neighborhood that it was built to be part of, which is 
for you to reverse it for us. I agree with that. We appreciate that. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Close the public hearing. Questions from the board, Mr. Smith? Um, yeah, just some points of clarification here. So, uh, I, I, I you, guess, uh, Mr. Thrasher, if you would come back up just in case. Dude, can you answer some of this? As you could educate me here on this. The, so if you add an accessory building, do which is essentially what this is, they're taking an external building, demolishing it, and adding an accessory building, then the entire house has to come up to current, uh, current, uh, now under the new ordinance, if they're expanding the square footage of the home by more than 20%, as soon as you attach the garage, then that becomes part of the total structure. Okay. It's not considered usable living space, but it is part of the structure. So if it's under 20%, then those yeah. rules don't apply because because they're adding more than 20% square footage to the house. Right. That's when, okay, okay. Thank you very much, I appreciate that. Great question. Mr. Foster? I, I have that. Mr. Poet? No question. No questions? I have no questions either. It's, uh, it's pretty well stated, so appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Thrasher. All right, uh, all the receipts and notices are in order. Yes. I'll uh, take a motion to accept them into the record. Chairman, I move that we admit all the evidence presented in regard to this matter, including the notices, receipts, maps, photographs, written documents, petitioner's application and attachments, petitioner's detailed statement of reasons, the staff report prepared by the planning department, certified copies of the zoning ordinance and comprehensive plan, testimony of the petitioner, city planning staff, and any remonstrators and all other exhibits presented, be they oral or written, for consideration by this board in regard to this petition and to include the testimony of those present this evening. Second. Motion by Mr. Peter, second by Mr. Poehler. All those in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5-0. I will take a motion on the ballot itself. Um, I move that we uh, approve the uh, relief from the residential uh, architectural standards and, and in the Unified Development Ordinance to allow dem demolition of an existing detached one-car garage and construction of a new two-car garage to be attached to the existing home in, uh, with the conditions that uh, one, prior to the issuance of the building permit, the, the property owner shall have the subdivision plat amended to merge the two lots, uh, lots 30 and 31 in Woodland Addition, into one large lot, uh, deleting the common lot uh, line in the middle. And number two, the property owner shall either remove the stone portion of the existing driveway or cover the soil and grass. Uh, all new driveway areas shall be paved with hard surface uh, materials such as concrete, asphalt, or paving bricks. Second. Motion by Mr. Smith, second by Mr. Foster. All those in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you. Um, I'll take a motion to adopt or define this effect. Mr. Chairman, having considered the statutory criteria, I move that we direct the Corporations Council. Office to draft written findings of fact regarding one decision on the variance, I'm uh, sorry, our decision on the variance request presented in the variance petition number VZA 2021-011. Said findings to specifically incorporate the staff report and the evidence submitted into the, into the record. For consideration and adoption by the board of zoning appeals as our final decision and final action regarding this petition at our next meeting. Second. Motion by Mr. Poehler, second by Mr. Smith. All those in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5 0. Uh, we'll take final action at the next meeting, but you are good to go ahead and proceed and working with the city and whatever you need to do. All right, sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any new business from the floor? Seeing none, any announcements? What's Main Street going to be done? Yeah. <laughs> End of July. That's End bad. of July. Wow, really? Not bad at all. Everybody keeps saying so. Nice. What about we're so right there at the eight by the eight? Uh, no, 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 I don't know anything about next one. year. <laughs> <laughs> all right, no other announcements. Um, then I'll take a motion for adjournment. So moved. All right, we are adjourned. Now, Ed, I have a question on this merger. How is that?